Sequences are particularly conspicuous and most rigidly crystallized in those representatives of art who are manipulators in the contemporary theaters, and this is because these manipulators, who are always interpreting the roles of certain of their fellow men with a being and significance far superior to their own, and who in themselves, as I have already said, are almost non-entities, gradually acquire, with their wholly automatized reason, a false view of themselves. Thus, with their quite automatized consciousness, and completely nonsensical emotions, they feel themselves to be immeasurably superior to what they really are. I must confess, dear Hassan, that during our earlier visits to the surface of that planet of yours and also at the beginning of our last sojourn there, although I was in many places and had various relations with those three brain beings who have taken your fancy, I scarcely ever felt in my common presence a genuine impulse of being pity for the infinitely unhappy fate of these favorites of yours, caused by circumstances hardly depending on themselves at all. But toward the end of our sixth visit there, when certain of them were formed with the kind of inner presence now possessed by the representatives of almost all branches of that art of theirs, and when these newly arisen types taking part in the process of ordinary being existence on an equal basis with others, happen to come into the field of perception of my sight with their exaggeratedly abnormal inner appreciation of themselves, they served as a shock for the rising in me of the impulse of pity, not only for them themselves but for all your unfortunate favorites. Now try to turn your attention, not to all three brain beings in general, nor to the other representatives of their contemporary art, but only to those who have become and have acquired the title of artists or actors. Although every one of them in his genuine essence is almost what is called a non-entity, that is, something utterly empty but enveloped in a certain visibility, they have gradually acquired such an opinion of themselves, by dint of repeating always and everywhere their favorite exclamations such as, what genius, what talent, what a gift, and any number of other expressions as empty as themselves, that it is as if, among similar beings around them, only they are of divine origin, only they are almost gods. Now listen and try to transubstantiate in the corresponding parts of your common presence, for use at the proper time, my really very practical advice. This practical advice is that if for some reason you should have to exist, particularly in the near future, among the three brain beings of that planet Earth which has taken your fancy, and I say in the near future, because the presence of these favorites of yours as well as all the external conditions of their ordinary being existence frequently degenerate, and if you should engage, as is proper to every conscious three-brain being, in some enterprise or other having as its aim the welfare of beings around you, and whose fulfillment depends partly on them themselves, then in whatever community of contemporary civilization you may be in whatever circles, you may frequent in the interests of your work, if you should ever meet any of these terrestrial types, be very, very careful and take all necessary measures to keep on good terms with them. To see why you must be so careful with these recently arisen types, and in order that you may understand them better from every aspect, I must not fail to mention two other facts that have become quite clear. 
The first is that, owing as always to the conditions of ordinary being existence abnormally established there, and also to the, fictitiously inflated, maleficent idea of their famous art, these, representatives of art, in the preconceived picturings and notions of the other three brain beings, gradually become crowned with an imaginary halo, and thereby automatically acquire such authority that any opinion they express is considered beyond dispute. And the second fact is that during their formation these recently arisen types acquire an inner presence that permits them, quite unconsciously on their part, just as easily to become somebody's slave as through accidental outer conditions to become his worst enemy. That is why I advise you to be very much on guard not to make enemies among them, so as not to stir up a lot of trouble for yourself in carrying out your affairs. Well then, our dear Hassan, the very, Zims, of my advice to you is that if indeed you should have to exist among the beings of the planet Earth and have dealings with these representatives of contemporary art, never tell the truth to their face. May you be preserved from such a fate. Any truth makes these terrestrial types extremely indignant, and their animosity toward others almost always begins from this indignation you must only say to their face the sort of things that tickle those consequences of the properties of the organ kundabuffer, infallibly crystallized in them, which I have already enumerated, namely, envy, pride, self-love, vanity, lying, and so on. And, as I noticed during my stay there, the means of tickling which never fail to act on the psyche of these unfortunate favorites of yours are the following. Suppose that one of these representatives of art has a face like a crocodile, be sure to tell him that he is the living picture of a bird of paradise. If one of them is as stupid as a cork, say that he has the mind of Pythagoras. If he has behaved in a certain matter like a super idiot, tell him that even that cunning fellow Lucifer could not have handled it better. Suppose that from his appearance you see signs that he has several terrestrial diseases from which he is rotting day by day, then, with an expression of astonishment on your face, ask him, do, tell me please, what is your secret for always looking so fresh, like, peaches and cream, and so on. Only remember one thing, never tell the truth. Although you have to behave like this toward all the beings of that planet, it is indispensable toward the representatives of all the branches of contemporary art. Having finished speaking, a moon, smirking like a suburban matchmaker at the wedding of a client, or the proprietress of a Paris fashion house seated in an ultra-chic cafe, began rearranging the curls of his tail. Hassan looked at him with his usual smile full of sincere gratitude and said, Many thanks to you, dear Ahun, both for your advice and for your clarification of certain details of the strange psyche of the three brain beings on that thoroughly ill-treated planet of our great universe. And then turning to Beelzebub he addressed him in the following words, Please, kind grandfather, tell me, is it really possible that all the intentions and efforts of those Babylonian learned beings have come to nothing, and that of all those fragments of knowledge then known on the earth, nothing would ever has reached the contemporary three brain beings. To this question of his grandson, Beelzebub replied, Indeed, my boy, to the great sorrow of everything existing in the universe, 
scarcely anything has survived from the results of their labors, and hence nothing has been inherited by your contemporary favorites. The information they indicated in the manner I described passed from generation to generation for only a few of their centuries. Soon after the epic of the magnificence of Babylon, thanks again to their chief particularity, namely, the periodic process of reciprocal destruction, not only did there almost entirely disappear the legomanism containing the keys to the lawful inexactitudes and the law of sevenfoldness that were introduced into each of the branches of the being of thoughtfulness and soldinokas but, as I have already told you, there was also gradually lost even the very idea of this universal law of the holy heptapara parshino, known in Babylon as the law of sevenfoldness. Every kind of conscious production of the beings of the Babylonian period was gradually destroyed, partly by decay in the course of time and partly during processes of reciprocal destruction, whenever this psychosis of theirs reached the stage called the destruction of everything within the sphere of visual perception. Single quote. These were the two chief reasons why almost all the consciously actualized results of the learned beings of the Babylonian epoch disappeared from the surface of that ill-fated planet, and at such a rate that after three of their centuries there was almost nothing left of them. It must also be noted that the second reason I mentioned led to the gradual decline and the almost total disappearance. Of that new form established in the Babylonian era for the transmission of information and various fragments of knowledge to later generations through the beings they called, initiates of art. I know a good deal about the disappearance of that custom of certain beings becoming, initiates of art, because just before I left that planet forever I had to elucidate this very thoroughly for another aim of mine. For this purpose I specially prepared a very good, Tikunia, chosen from among the beings of the female sex there, and made these clarifications through her. Tikunias, were formerly known on that planet as, Pythonesses, but the contemporary ones are called, Mediums. So then, I found out that in the most recent times only four of these beings, initiates of art, still remain there, through whom the keys to the understanding of ancient art still continue to be transmitted by means of a direct line of inheritance, and that this transmission now proceeds under very complex and arcane conditions. Today, one comes from among the beings called Redskins, dwelling on the continent of America, another from among those inhabiting what are called the Philippine Islands, the third from among the beings of the continent of Asia, in the region known as the source of the Pianje River, and the fourth and last from among those who are called Eskimos. Now listen carefully to why I use the expression, almost, when I said that three of their centuries after the Babylonian period every kind of conscious and automatic reproduction of the being of Fakulnas and Solginokas had almost entirely ceased to exist. The point is that two of the branches of knowledge connected with the conscious productions of the beings of the Babylonian period chanced upon favorable conditions and certain of their elements passed from generation to generation, partly consciously through the beings transmitting them, and partly automatically. One of these two branches recently ceased to exist, but the other has even reached certain beings of contemporary times almost unchanged. 
This branch that reached beings of contemporary times is called sacred dances. Thanks exclusively to the survival of these sacred dances from Babylonian times, a very limited number of free brain beings now have the possibility, by means of certain conscious labors, to decipher them and learn the information hidden there which is useful for their own being. And the other branch I mentioned, which recently ceased to exist, was the branch of knowledge of the Babylonian learned beings devoted to the combination of different tonalities of color, which contemporary beings call painting. The transmission of this branch of knowledge from generation to generation proceeded almost everywhere and, although gradually coming to an end with the flow of time, it continued until quite recently at a regular tempo, both consciously and automatically, among the beings of a community called Persia. And it was only just before I left your planet for the last time, when the influence of the so-called painters of contemporary European culture began to make itself felt also in Persia and the Persian beings of the same profession began to wiseacre, that the transmission of this branch of knowledge entirely ceased. It must be remarked that in spite of all this, Quite a number of the works of Babylonian times did reach the beings of contemporary civilization, chiefly the beings breeding on the continent of Europe but these beings, with Out suspecting the well of wisdom concealed in these works, which were not originals, but only partially decayed copies made by their recent ancestors, who were not yet complete, plagiarists, and without taking the appropriate practical measures to safeguard them, simply stuck them into what are called museums, and there, little by little these works have been either totally destroyed or partially mutilated by frequent copyings with various corrosive and oxidizing compositions such as alabaster, fish glue, and so on, only in order that the copyists might swagger before their friends or fool their teachers, or achieve some other Hasnamusian aim. It must in fairness be admitted that now and again certain beings of contemporary civilization have suspected that something was concealed in the works that chanced to reach them in their original form, specially created in Babylon by the members of the club of the adherents of Legomanism, or even in the copies of these originals made in the course of their transmission from generation to generation by various conscientious professionals. To whom, as I have already said, it had not yet become proper to plagiarize, and who therefore did not resort to altering the details of the works of others in order to pass them off as their own and it sometimes happened that certain of these inquiring beings of the European civilization, while searching very attentively, actually found in these works some fragment or other of this something that had been intentionally hidden in them. For instance, at the beginning of the contemporary European civilization, a certain monk named Ignatius, who had formerly been an architect, attained the possibility of deciphering the knowledge and useful information hidden in the productions of almost all the branches of what was then called ancient art, which had come down from the Babylonian epoch. This monk Ignatius was about to share his discovery with other monks like himself, that is, with two of his so-called brethren, with whom he, as a specialist, had been sent by his abbot to direct the laying of the foundations of a temple that later became famous 
when for some trifling reason ensuing from the crystallized consequences of one of the properties of the organ Kundavapur called envy, he was murdered while asleep, and his planetary body was thrown into the expanse of water surrounding the small island on which it was proposed to erect that temple. Ignatius arose and was formed as a responsible being on the continent of Europe, but when he reached responsible age, in order to enrich himself with information concerning the profession he had made the aim of his existence, namely, that of architecture, he left for the continent of Africa and there he entered the brotherhood which existed on that continent under the name of the truth seekers, and afterward, when this brotherhood migrated to the continent of Europe, where it grew in numbers and its members took the name of Benedictines, he was already an all rights possessing brother of this order. The temple I refer to exists there even until today and is called, it seems, the Abbey of Mont Saint Michel. Single quote. On this continent of Europe several other inquiring beings also happen to notice lawful inexactitudes in the works of various branches of art that had reached them from ancient times, but no sooner did they find the key to the understanding of these inexactitudes than their existence came to an end. Still another being from the continent of Europe noticed these inexactitudes, and becoming more and more interested in laboring perseveringly, he was able fully to decipher works of almost all the branches of art. This wise terrestrial free-brained being was named Leonardo da Vinci. In concluding my present tale about contemporary terrestrial art, I might as well mention yet another of the many specific characteristics of those beings of contemporary civilization who devote themselves to this famous art. This specific characteristic of theirs is that whenever one of these beings notices some lawful illogicality in the productions that have come down from ancient times and begins to work in his branch of art in quite a new manner perhaps in order to make this lawful illogicality clear to himself in practice most of the beings around him occupied professionally in the same branch at once become his followers and begin doing supposedly the same thing but of course without either aim or sense And it is owing to this, specific, characteristic of the psyche of the representatives of contemporary art that, on the one hand, what are called, new movements in art, are constantly springing up among your favorites, and on the other hand, those movements which were somehow rightly established by preceding generations, even though only after a fashion, are constantly dwindling. Although this phenomenon exists among the representatives of all branches of contemporary art, for some reason or other the beings occupied in the branch they call, painting, are most susceptible to it. Hence it is that at the present time there exist among these professionals a great many, new movements in painting, which have arisen in this way and have nothing in common. These new movements are known there by names such as Cubism, Futurism, Synthesism, Imagism, Impressionism, Colorism, Formalism, Surrealism, and many of her such names also ending in Ism. Single quote. At this place in the Elzebub's tail the roofs of all the passengers of the trans spaceship Karnak suddenly radiated, something phosphorescent. This meant that the ship Karnak was nearing the place of her destination, that is, the planet Ravosbrodender. And already a stir and bustle began among the passengers preparing to descend from the ship. Beelzebub, 
passing, and the moon ended their conversation and also hurriedly began to get themselves ready. The phosphorescent gleaming of the roofs came about because from the engine room there were directed to that section of the ship, concentrated in the required proportions, the holy parts of the sacred omnipresent Okadano. Chapter 31 The sixth and last sojourn of Beelzebub on the planet Earth. When, after two, Ornacris, or, as they say on the planet Earth, after two, months, the cosmic intersystem ship Karnak left the atmosphere of the planet Ravasbradender and began to fall back in the direction of the solar system Pandetsnoke toward the planet Kuratus, Hassane sat down in his usual place and turned to Beelzebub with the following words. Dear and beloved grandfather, be kind as always and tell me something more about the three-centered being breathing on the planet Earth. In reply to this, Beelzebub related the story of his sixth and last sojourn on the planet called, Earth. He began thus. I visited that planet for the sixth time just before I received my full pardon, with permission to leave that very remote solar system situated almost beyond reach of the direct emanations of the Most Holy Sun Absolute, that is, just before my return here to the center of the universe, to the place of my arising, in the very bosom of our common uni being endlessness. As it turned out, I had to exist among these peculiar beings for a fairly long period, namely, a little less than a year of our time or, by their time calculation, more than 300 years. This last visit of mine to the surface of that planet which has pleased you is brought about by the following circumstances. You must know that after my fifth visit to that planet of yours I continued as before to observe from time to time. The existence of the three brain beings there I observed them most attentively during those periods when their chief particularity was taking place among them, namely, during the processes of reciprocal destruction. And I observed them so attentively at these periods because I wished to clarify for myself, beyond all doubt, the causes of the periodic manifestations of that utterly horrifying need of their strange, not to say phenomenal, psyche. So when I happened to be a little freer than usual, I would follow for almost the whole Martian day or night all their different manifestations during this process. And thanks to these special observations I made from the planet Mars, as well as during my former personal sojourns among them, I acquired a fairly exact knowledge of all the ways and means used by them for more effective destruction of each other's existence. Well, my boy, once while I was watching this process of theirs from the planet Mars through my big Tesquano, I suddenly noticed something absolutely new, which served as the initial cause impelling me to undertake my sixth descent, that is, I saw that without moving from their places they did something with a certain object out of which came a tiny puff of smoke, whereupon a being from the opposite side immediately fell down either totally destroyed or with one or another part of his planetary body mutilated or destroyed forever. This observation greatly astonished me, as I had never seen such a means of reciprocal destruction before, and no data had as yet crystallized in my presence for a confrontative logical explanation of their possible use of such a means for destroying the existence of other beings like themselves my former logical and psychological explanations could in no way be applied to this new means for destroying each other's existence. Thank you. 
Until then I had explained to myself that the beings of any given epoch did not acquire such an abnormal particularity of their psyche all by themselves, but that this horrible periodic